Over the past year, I've filmed many sharks here in Southern California. Most are juvenile white sharks, ranging from five to eight feet. But sometimes I do find larger sharks, and this one appears to be one of those. The size is evident, as are the scars. These scars are likely from tussles with other sharks or seals, and they appear to be more prevalent on the larger sharks. From this view, you can really see how much larger this shark is compared to the other juvenile shark. But when a white shark this big comes close to shore, it is bound to draw a lot of attention. And this one, well, let's just say it attracted a lot of humans. I filmed many encounters with boaters on this day. I'm going to share a few with you now. Keep in mind, for some folks, curiosity leads them to want to get closer for a better look at a white shark. And while going to take a peek is not in itself illegal or necessarily bad for that matter, it can be if the process involves interfering with marine life. For this reason, rules are in place for how boats are to be handled around whales, for example. For sharks, it's a more gray area. Fortunately, in most encounters I film, folks are respectful to the shark's space. In this encounter, you have a boat full of folks simply getting close to see the shark. They approach it slowly and don't appear to chase it or overtly cut its path. This encounter really gives us a good reference for how large this shark is. This boat is likely 18 to 23 feet long. One could imagine the excitement they have as they come so close to such a magnificent apex predator. They even get selfies with it. But notice here that after they see it, they don't go chase it. But not all boaters take the same approach. And that approach is not good for folks who are swimming nearby. Notice there are four sharks in this frame. As this boat approaches, it sees one of them. It is at this moment that I begin to survey the area around the boat. Suddenly, I notice that one of the boaters starts slapping the surface of the water with an object. So I get close to examine. It's here that I realize they are using a broom to slap the surface of the water. And here you see the shark actually reacts. It becomes curious. This is not an ideal white shark encounter. These folks are essentially interfering with a wild animal, so much so that they are attracting it back to their boat. As the shark gets closer, the other individual takes the broom and begins to splash the water with it. The shark, it gets within 10 feet of the boat. Look close and another shark is approaching at the top of the frame. The sharks hear the splashes and at least one of them is attracted to it. When the shark loses interest, the individual flips the broom over and splashes with a handle instead. It's clear what these folks are trying to do. This behavior is not only interfering with the shark, it may actually be illegal. Right here, they notice my drone, and they actually wave at me. What they don't notice is that there is another shark just in front of the boat's bow. And while I am sure the folks mean no harm to the shark, it is still not a good idea to purposely try to attract a white shark. In my observations, I've noticed that more and more white sharks are becoming attracted to boats. My question is why? Do white sharks make associations? Yes, they do. It's been proven they do. A boat motor doesn't attract a large number of sharks to a boat. But I am seeing a trend here. Of note, I've had a few locals message me about witnessing folks chum the waters to attract white sharks. This could explain why these sharks are approaching the boats. 
As sharks hear the motors, they begin to associate the sound with food, especially if the boat operators rev their motors and then chomp. It is a possible explanation, but one must remember there are a good amount of humans swimming nearby. And perhaps associating humans with food is not the best approach to coexisting with these white sharks. It's not good for the humans and it's definitely not good for the sharks. I've shown many times before the scars on sharks that have been struck by boats. Here's yet another shark I filmed this week. It's evident it has a boat strike scar. Do you see the white patterns near the caudal fin? The shark was basically struck by the boat's propellers, hence the pattern of its injuries. This is a classic example. It's not a surprise to find sharks with these type of injuries. Unfortunately, I'm certain it won't be the last shark I find with an injury like this. In my time filming these sharks, I've learned to appreciate their presence. Locally, they remain abundant in our waters. The drone has allowed me to see what may have always been there anyways. But probably most important is that it's allowed me to acknowledge that in order to coexist in their domain, respect and education are paramount. How easy is it to see a fin from shore? Let me show you. Do you see the fin? You just have to train your eyes. This shark was no more than 150 feet offshore. Its fin absolutely beautiful and visible. Yet most beachgoers did not see it. Here's a shot with my R5 from the shore. With the drone, it looks remarkably different. I often fly low and at an angle to get a clear shot of the shark for identification purposes. Suddenly, a boat appears in my frame. This boat nearly hits me, and without much regard for the drone. This was a revelation for me. I realized boats are using my drone as a guide to chase sharks, and that's what this boat was doing. However, I found a way to deter them. More on that in the future. This type of footage is not why I like to do this. Lots can be learned from documenting both the human actions and the shark's actions in these types of environments. However, it's when the humans have no idea a shark is nearby that I find the footage to be most intriguing and the most natural. I will often set up a couple cameras from shore just to record a possible breach. It's not until later when I review the footage that I will find sharks nearby. Here's one of those clips. There are two sharks in this clip, one noticeably larger than the other. It's a good reminder that they share the water with humans. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. I've also included some links to organizations that are actively involved in protecting our oceans. Please pay them a visit.